Good morning, everybody. Mark Finan here in the home weather office on this Tuesday morning. It is the 27th day of June 2023. This is the morning briefing coming to you from the home weather office. And as I look out the window, it is another bright and sunny morning. It should be another comfortable day. We're going to talk a little bit about the heating that is on our way and also we're going to take kind of a a deeper dive into how it is we forecast uh, high temperatures and especially when it's going to get hot. Um, I'll show you kind of the old school methods uh, that I use and that a lot of people use. It's um, kind of, it'll be a, a bit of a deeper dive, but it might help explain uh, some of the things I've been showing you in the past, like the temperatures aloft. So how do the temperatures aloft impact the temperatures uh, down on the surface? So I'll show you all of that. Like I said, I, I'm giving you a warning right now. This is going to be kind of a, a deeper dive, might get a little bit a little bit wonky here in a, in a little bit. Uh, st first, I want to start with a, a, a stat or two for you. No, not that. This one. This is what I want to show you first. So in Sacramento, 90s in June, we averaged 16 days. That's the last 30 years. So I just uh, did an average for the last 30 years. It comes back actually out to 15.6 days in the month of June that are at or above 90. Yet we've been talking about the, uh, the highs above 100 that we haven't seen any. But also, we've had a lack of 90s this month. We've only had four. Last year, we had 19. The year before that, we had 22. So that really is a good example of the cool air we have had around the area. Um, we'll add a couple to that total, but this will be a similar total to what we had back in 05, when, interestingly enough, back in 05, we also saw our first 100 on the last day of June. June 30th. All right, so let's take a look at the satellite this morning. We still have marine layer. However, the marine layer... Not as extensive as it has been the last couple of days. Also, it's easy to see in the early morning sun that there is a little bit of that uh, smoke from Canada that gets dragged into the trough that we have aloft. And these clouds are the remnants of the thunderstorms we saw last night up over, uh, up over Tehama County and into parts of Plumas County. And we'll likely see thunderstorms develop again today. So with that, let's take a look at the HRRR. We will be seeing a nice... Quiet morning, then in the afternoon, thunderstorms pop up once again, uh, up around uh, Shasta, and then into parts of uh, Lassen County, like around Susanville, and up around Honey Lake, we'll likely see some showers and thunderstorms. Really not showing anything in the Tahoe Basin today, but this model might miss that. I wouldn't be surprised if we see something down around Truckee today. And then on Wednesday, it looks as though Wednesday is going to be the last day of this, and it might be a little bit more extensive on Wednesday. This is Wednesday at 5 o'clock. Then we have thunderstorms from Carson Pass all the way down toward Bishop. Also might see some of that activity again around Tahoe, even though it's not showing up on the model. Well, I guess it's showing a little blip here and there. But there isn't going to be anything on the, on the west slope. All right, so that's going to be the last of it. Let's talk about the temperatures and the temperatures aloft. And what I'm going to show you here, uh, these are the temperatures at 5,000 feet. Now, these are going to come out in degrees C. So let me just move this just a little bit. So this morning, we are, uh, I'll just kind of scan over the valley. We're at around 15, 16 degrees. All right. And as we go into the afternoon, the temperature doesn't change that much during the day. So that's the interesting thing here is that the temperatures aloft don't change very much during the course of the day. And that's why we look at the temperatures aloft and how, because they're more, uh, they, they don't respond as much to the heating of the day, um, as, especially above 5,000 feet. But I'm going to show you these 5,000, this 5,000 foot example, and you'll see why in a minute. All right, so today the temperatures stay around 15 or 16. As we get into Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday a little bit warmer, I'm just going to keep scrolling around the Sacramento area. The temperature goes up to about 18 degrees. Let's see, 18, 36, minus 3, 33. So this is about 65 degrees Fahrenheit um, at 5,000 feet. So that's a little bit warmer. And then as we get into the day on Thursday, Thursday afternoon at 5 o'clock, then that temperature goes to 23 degrees. Let's see, 23 is 46. 46, 42, that's 74 degrees, 74, 75 degrees. So that's a, that's a pretty big jump uh, aloft. So how does that translate to the surface? Well, the, the like I said, the temperatures aloft, they don't change as much during the day, from the morning to the afternoon. You get warm air and cold air advection as we go through the day, as the air mass is changing like it is here. But what I want to show you is uh, what we call a sounding, a vertical profile of the atmosphere. So as I move this over here, 
What you'll be able to see is this is the, the surface over here where it says 1,000. And then as we go aloft, what you'll see is that the um, that's 850, 700. These are in millibars. So I was just showing you the level here at 850. And so that's the temperature. This is the first thing Thursday morning. There's that temperature aloft. Now, as you go down to the surface, notice how the temperature decreases. Yeah, this is the temperature down here in degrees C. So here's zero and these are the negatives. There's zero and there's the positives. So look at the temperature down here. The temperature actually gets colder down toward the surface. So what we do is in order to, to figure out what the maximum temperature might be on any given day, um, what you do is you look at the temperature aloft and while you don't see it on this profile, um, there's one I use in the office called the skew T diagram and it has um, on it lines that are called dry 80 bats. So in other words, if you took this parcel of air at 850, 5,000 feet roughly, and brought it down to the surface following uh, a dry adiabatic process, where would it come out to be? And it would come out somewhere in here. I can show you, actually, the way this same sounding looks for Thursday afternoon. So the temperature aloft hasn't changed, but look, look how this temperature has come down in this way. So if there were dry adiabats on this, you'd be able to follow that. And what that temperature aloft of 74, 75 degrees Fahrenheit translates to, I know it might be hard to read that number right there, but that's 98. So as the temperatures aloft warm or cool, then that affects the temperature down at the surface if it's going to follow a dry adiabat, like it does during our warmer, uh, warmer temperatures. So again, in the morning hours, you get the inversion. The other thing that's important about this is that this inversion also is why the foothills stay so much warmer. As we get into Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the foothills will be staying with overnight lows in the 70s while the valley drops down to the 60s. Also, other local things will impact this as well, like onshore breezes cooling off places like Napa and Fairfield, whereas areas like uh, Marysville, Modesto, and certainly farther up the valley toward Redding will not see as much of that. But then if you're along Highway 49, Auburn to Placerville, Camino, uh, Pioneer, Volcano, uh, Sonora, Twain Heart, all of those places will be seeing overnight lows in the 70s, so staying much warmer, but then not warming as much during the day. So that's kind of a, maybe a, a kind of a, a deep dive on, on, on temperatures and how we forecast them. So that's why we look at the temperatures aloft. And I've shown you that a couple of times, um, either 5,000 foot temperatures or 10,000 foot temperatures and how that air mass moves around the country. Uh, but that's how those temperatures aloft reflect what's going to happen down at the surface. And, and that's kind of an old school way that, um, that I use in the office using dry adiabats on an old skew T diagram. So that's what I've got for you today. Today, beautiful day. Temperatures will stay in the upper 80s. Some of the warmer spots may be around 90. Then on Wednesday, we will see temperatures get into the low 90s. And then by Thursday, upper 90s. Then Friday through the weekend, likely up around 100 to 103 in the valley, our first 100s of the season. But the mornings, I think, in the valley will still be relatively comfortable. So it is going to be that time of year where you do want to plan around the um the, the warmest part of the day. So if you like to exercise, do so in the morning. So just kind of get in the, the mode of doing that or thinking about that for Friday and the weekend. Use the morning hours and try to lay low in the afternoon. We haven't really seen any heat yet. We get used to it after a while, but um, our first 100s, they tend to feel a little bit worse than when we kind of used to them in August and September. So that's everything I've got for you this morning. It is Tuesday, so that means I'll be on KCRA at 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, and 11. And there will be a Facebook live chat tonight at 8 o'clock. So have a great day. Make it a good one. I'll talk to you later.